Here are a few of uh, my words and thoughts on our favourite couple, Harry and Meghan. As my fellow wordsmith, William Shakespeare, inquired, what's in a name? Quite a lot, it transpires, if you're Queen Elizabeth II, who we now know was incandescent with fury when her grandson Harry and his American wife hijacked her childhood nickname Lilibet and bestowed it upon their newborn daughter. Astonishingly, without her permission or blessing. At the time, to those in her inner circle, the seething sovereign stormed, I don't own the palaces, I don't own the paintings, the only thing I own is my name, and now they've taken that. Was there ever a more damning quote? As revealed in author Robert Hardman's new book, Charles III, New King, New Court, written with the tacit approval of Buckingham Palace and with help from royal aides, this rage-filled statement provides an illuminating window into the Queen's private feelings about the behaviour of Harry and Meghan after they quit their duties for a lucrative new life in sunny California. Her Majesty was as angry as the rest of us, let's be honest. Uh, we're battle-hardened to the dubious antics of the Duke and Duchess of Montecito. We're used to their warped version of the truth, Harry and Meghan's truth, as opposed to the truth. The gruesome twosome told 17 demonstrable fibs during that infamous interview with their neighbour, Oprah Winfrey. Some might say indeed have said that while they moaned about alleged royal racists and the terrible way the Queen and her clan treated poor Meghan, the carping couple were lying through their teeth to play the victim card. Since that opera moment, we've learned to greet everything emanating from their gleaming $21 million mansion with extreme scepticism. Hard to take Harry's war on the media seriously when his own relationship with accuracy is, to put it mildly, somewhat sketchy. But the shocking revelations in Hardman's book have taken the Sussex duo's deceptions to a whole new level. Not only did they lie about the Queen giving the green light to Lilibet, when the BBC reported correctly that she did no such thing, the royal runaways fired off legal letters demanding that the state broadcaster retract the story or face legal actions. The story they insisted was false and defamatory. Then, incredibly, they expected the Queen to back them up. Described by palace staff as as angry as they had ever seen her, she refused and, surprise, surprise, Harry and Meghan's legal broadside disappeared, never to be heard of again. Lie and then hire expensive lawyers to enforce your lie. Doesn't get much lower than that, although accepting a ludicrous living legends of aviation awards isn't exactly a high point for former army helicopter pilot Harry. Uh, for serving his country bravely, of course, he deserves our respect. But as fuming senior military figures swiftly pointed out, that doesn't make him a legend of aviation. And the fact that he is prepared to preen himself at a pathetic back-slapping ceremony hosted by John Travolta underlines just how much this increasingly preposterous prince has been seduced by the self-glorifying hypocrisy of Hollywood, where lying is a way of life. <clears throat> He's having a bad week, isn't he, uh, your hero, Harry? <laughs> JJ? <clears throat> My hero. Look, I've had to make notes because there's so much... Did Shakespeare say all that, by the way? <laughs> no, 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 that was just the quote. <laughs> God. Yes, he did. That, I, I lifted that. <laughs> I'm going to plagiarism. I plagiarism. Yeah. Said, and my I thanks. Like, wow, to... I missed that one doing that. Yeah. My thanks to the bard, but, yeah. uh, but, he, but he can't write like I can. Look, he really can't. Kevin, there was so much bullshit in what you just read out. So I had to make a list of all the inaccuracies in your monologue, your okay. your soliloquy, as Shakespeare would say. So first of all. Um, the, the, this statement I'm that... I'm surprised you've heard of Shakespeare. Oh, very good. Can you, can you spell it? <laughs> All right, go on, carry on with this crap. Go Look, on. Do we get just, to swear on this shit? Yes, it's yeah, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Right. All right, just sharpen it Listen, Charles yeah. Brandreth, OK, Charles Brandreth, he also wrote a book less than two years ago about this whole situation, about the Queen um, uh, and Harry and Meghan going... Charles Brandreth, that famed writer of fiction. George Bernard, who is a very, very good friend of, of the royal family, he, he is closer to them than this Robert Hardman is. Oh, well, fuck off. That's ridiculous. And Charles Brandreth said no, no, no. that the Queen was very um, accepting of Rubbish. Him. And right. Rubbish. No, not rubbish. Yeah, but they didn't ask her. They didn't ask her. Well, and guess... she, di she did not give her 
Guess what? They're blessed. Well, well, you're the one quoting Robert Hardman, who says in his book that actually... Are you saying that Robert Hardman's book's, like, full of inaccuracies? Yeah! Oh. Yes! No, 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 Robert Hardman says... Well, OK, let, 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 no, 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 let's finish. rewind. Robert uh, let's says... see, you think that uh, the Queen was thrilled that they nicked Lilibet didn't nick, for their kid. Didn't nick the name. They like, did! It's in the on. bloody it book! Is. Robert Hardman says that they did ask the Queen and the Queen said that she felt she had no alternative other than to oh, say yes. Afterwards. Oh, oh Give it up, JJ! No, These no. couple are a couple of barefaced they, they, lies. Why should you believe Hardman over oh, Alex, like Alex, Alex, on. Alex is so, going, shut first up, JJ. That's only, first of that's only one, I've got shut many more. Shut up, JJ. Many more. Just button it. The only reason they wanted to use that name is not because they really love and treasure the Queen and wanted to do something nice for her. Otherwise, they wouldn't have called her entire family an institution that she's dutifully served her whole life a racist thing. Um, so, you know, it's not about oh, serving the Queen. Um, yeah, it's a cheap manoeuvre. And then, you know, you feel like, oh, by the way, Nan, I'm going to nick your name. What does Nan have to say? <laughs> now, I just want to say, if this happened to me and they wanted to nick my yeah. childhood name, I could pronounce yeah. my own name because I'm yeah, you know, a savant or something. Yeah, your childhood name was that was your yeah. childhood name. No, I'm a savant, <laughs> so I could say Alexandra with all the syllables. Turns out that my brother's children have a big difficulty with this and instead of calling me Auntie Alex I've had two names okay on record one has been Auntie Eggs and Auntie Arsehole <laughs> no, it was. It was. I didn't it know that. Auntie Arsehole. Honestly, I just made that up. I'm going to send you the video. Hilarious. We've got the video of this. I'm going to send it to you. You might even be able to drop it in. Drop it in. They got your number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but listen, 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 was. listen. Harry. JJ, wait a second, wait a second. If <laughs> this is not true, why yes. have Harry and Meghan not said anything? And why have the palace not said anything? The palace, we know, they op they cooperated with uh, Robert Harbin and they were very relieved to get this story out. Uh, come, you cannot uh, allow Harbin to say the Queen was as angry as anyone had ever seen her uh, and nobody challenges it. You cannot say that that story is not true. Well, remind me again what the palace said about the, the mate who... The no, 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 answer that me, question. I'm answering the question by asking this one. Remind me what the palace said about that, that guy who was friends of the paedophile Epstein. What was his name? The, the Duke of York. What did the palace have to say about him? Nothing. They paid off his. They paid, no, they, they paid off them. Paid off his. his oh, by his the way. Fees, by the way. Paid a woman say, he's never yeah. met. Oh, but, but the palace said nothing. The palace. Well, we just move on to a little bit anything. more information about uh, Harry. Uh, he, talking of firing off legal letters to enforce lies, uh, he has just today lost uh, that massive libel case against the Mail on Sunday when he said that. Uh, Oh, the Mail on Sunday said that he span a story uh, to uh, make his position look better in that long-running dispute he's had with the Home Office about police protection when he mm -hmm. comes to Britain. Uh, he sued over that. Uh, guess what? Uh, today, he's completely folded. Uh, he's had to give the, the Mail on Sunday £250,000 to pay their legal expenses, and his own legal expenses are £500,000. I would suggest this is another case of uh, Prince Harry lying and then hiring expensive lawyers to enforce that lie. Yes or no? No. And I would say... <laughs> <laughs> I would say that Robert Hardman, and I'm angry with Robert Hardman. I'll tell you oh, why. Are you? I'll tell you why I'm angry with him. Are you? If only you heard of you. I'll tell you why I'm angry with him, right? Yeah, right. I'm angry with him because he makes our queen look petty and mean. No, there he is, doesn't. There is no, no there, Alex, Alex, there is oh, no, no, there is no, there is no parents. Hold on. There's no hold parents. Shut up. There's no parents and there's no grandparents in the world who would be angry and yeah, yeah, Wait a second, but she was. But she was. No, no Alex, was. Alex, but let Alex think, say look, something. I think the, I've important enough thing here, the important thing here is to describe what angry is, right? And the angriest as the queen has ever been seen. You guys know. In your own terms I'm, of yeah, spectrum. I'm famous but for being I angry. get the impression that if you're going to describe the Queen as as angry as I've ever seen her, it's like picking apart the difference between various, like, Dulux colour palettes from, you know, harvest moon to eggshell off hue to burnt porridge. What is she you know, at the yeah, Queen yeah. level of anger. Cider. Are you all vodka in here? Yeah. The Queen level of anger goes from, I'm very annoyed by this to, Recollections may vary. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, I, mean but, I don't no, think the point. Queen was like throwing plates like a Greek waiter. And uh, as for the aviation awards, 
It's not his fault he got nominated, is it? He didn't yeah, well, have... don't go. He don't make have... a fool of yourself. Now, have... shut up, will you? Shut up. I've had enough of you. Uh, you're never coming on this show. Well, actually, uh, I'm so desperate, I do need you again. Uh, but it's time now for a bad ad. Over 100 million Americans keep guns in their homes for protection. The Second Amendment to the Constitution guarantees all Americans the right to keep and bear arms. But these arms must be accessible. The patented backup gun rack keeps your shotgun at your bedside and is easily hidden by blankets and sheets. The patented backup device slides easily between your mattress and box spring. I want it. I'm for it. We've just heard that World War III is going to break out. In so 20 give me years, that. Alex. In 20 years. I've yeah. got to learn to shoot the thing. <laughs> give me time. I'm blonde. You can't be too careful. <laughs> you know, a, a gun by, 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 by attached to your They're mattress. They're coming after my data on their 40, electric bikes. 40,000 people die um, a year in America from, from gun violence. Yeah. I, I, I which is why you need one. Which is why you need one. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Right at the level for the kids to pick up. If you up don't have well. a gun to shoot oh, people, God. you'll be one of the I'm people. Train up. Thank you for the advice. I'm going to train up my cat tonight when I get home. Do. See this ball Do. of yarn? Imagine there's a trigger on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're all after the show. We're going straight out to buy ourselves a mattress gun. <laughs> uh, excellent product. Really, really like that. Uh, time now for a real ad break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, oh, welcome back uh, to the greatest television show ever made. What just happened? And uh, I'm really pleased to be joined today by two game show hosts, Bradley Walsh <laughs> and Holly Willoughby. Uh, where'd you get those bloody jackets? <laughs> Did you actually walk into a shop, a clothes store, and go, ooh, yeah, I like Just this, yeah. yeah. That is part of a suit. There is only I went to online. New York. Look, look, at the, look at the lining, look at that. You know what it says? Says yeah, yeah, never mind about the lining. <laughs> it's the outside <laughs> of the jacket that's lining? worrying me. <laughs> you wore it yesterday on Crosstalk as well, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Can you please never wear that jacket again? I'm telling you what, if you sit next to Kev on a daily basis, you get so angry with a pen like this. I sit next to him and it swaps to this hand, and then he starts going like this and starts drawing <laughs> yeah, on you. Well, I'm, so, a, very, I'm a famously you know. angry man, and here's something else that I'm angry about. So, uh, listen to this. Uh, the passage through Parliament of Rishi's Rwanda bill was rocky enough when it was debated by the disproportionate number of waffling lawyers who, it seems, became MPs to showcase their Latin-laced legal verbiage in the House of Commons. At one particularly painful point in the prolonged proceedings, one alleged representative of the people, yet another boring barrister windbag turned two-bit politician, droned on for 20 tedious minutes about the important principle of a nobile officium, uh, before moving on to the declaration of our broth in 1320, Article 19 of the Treaty of Union, and of course the key case of McCormick versus Lord Advocate in 1953. Out of touch doesn't even begin to cover it. Uh, lawyers seem to be able to talk at this level, side exasperated Tory member for Don Valley, Nick Fletcher. But the constituents who sent us here are still struggling to understand why, when we put illegal migrants onto a plane, someone in Strasbourg can simply say no. Precisely. If more MPs could speak human as opposed to laborious legalese, one senses the country would not be in such a mess. In the end, the safety of Rwanda bill limply won the vote on the altar of tough-talking Tory rebels who cometh the hour, stopped talking tough, and meekly did what they were told by the Prime Minister, whose miserable mismanagement of the migrant crisis has turned him into a national laughing stock. But if you think all that took a long time, Wait until the bill gets to the House of Lords. A ludicrously long wait, as a matter of fact. Why can't the prattling peers get round to this crucial issue before February the 12th? And why won't we get their verdict until at least two weeks after that? The glacial pace of Parliament at its most grotesque. Uh, more to the point, the assembled Labour and Lib Dem lords, ladies, barons, baronesses, viscounts, and whatever other outmoded titles they like to call themselves, are certain to hate the Rwanda bill and do their level best to hold it up, block it up, and screw it up, which I wouldn't mind at all if any of them were elected by the people, as in America's Senate. A second chamber to check, amend, and sometimes reject legislation is a sound and sensible idea. 
but giving the job to a bunch of unelected former MPs, aristocrats, tycoons who basically buy their peerages, party leaders, mates, and for God's sake, bishops, is a disgraceful affront to democracy. Keir Starmer has vowed to abolish the upper chamber when he gets the keys to number 10, but he won't. He'll do what they all do, appoint a shed load of lackeys to swing the voting his way. This poisonous power of patronage should be taken away from politicians. It's grossly unfair and has turned the ever-expanding Lords into the world's second largest legislative chamber after the Chinese Assembly. It's time to kick out our 785 ermine-clad nobles, all of whom can claim 323 quid a day just for turning up, and replace them with committed commoners who persuade us they are worthy of our votes. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called democracy. Yes? Yes? Oh, God. Yes. Well, thank you. You're, Alex, first. Alex first. Uh, yes, of right? Of course, yeah. Well, Alex yes. first. Yeah. I mean, if it was under me, it'd just be a dictatorship. We wouldn't have the uh, yeah, commons or the lords. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're, I'm glad you're getting a step closer to that situation when I rule you're everything turning as, into uh, a fascist. as the empress. <laughs> I have to be with this girl every <laughs> the, day. The, emp <laughs> the empress of the world. But but right no. wing doesn't begin to cover it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so oh, what, what do you I'm, think I'm about I'm the this? never wrong wing. But, you know, this is very important. It is an important issue. Just the size of the lords, the fact you've got people's hairdressers, people who've donated to the party, it's awful. It's uh, it's fear and favour. Mm -hmm. I've seen this play out personally when I was uh, in the Brexit party and we stood down all those candidates. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason was because behind the scenes, the sort of things that were being offered as, you know, little mm -hmm. Phillips mm -hmm. to try and, you know, yeah. get people to come over and not stand anymore. But then also the intimidation. They published the name and addresses and phone numbers of candidates in a national newspaper. They were saying, oh, you know, stop them from standing. It was the sort of thing Erdogan would do in Turkey or what, what? Putin would do in Russia. No, the Conservative Party. She does this. And she they, right. she, so she, back to the House of Lords, they, though. They, well, no, but, they, but this whole idea, they had this <laughs> list, right, called Men and Measures. Nadine Doris probably knows about this. This list called Men and Me Measures, which involves sort of dishing out peerages yeah. to stop people but standing the for the point. Brexit party. I mean, well, it is a sick system. Someone yeah, take her uh, back no, to but that. Seriously, seriously, <laughs> your <laughs> mate, your mate, uh, Keir Starmer... Oh, stop calling him my mate. Yeah, I don't no, like you, him. you don't like him, <laughs> and I like you for that. Your that's mate's the only, Sir That's the only thing I like you for. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, Keir Starmer, like all Labour uh, potential Prime Ministers, they all say, I'll abolish the House of Lords. But, you know, they, uh, they, they never do because they want this power of patronage uh, to uh, swing votes in the commas. Hey, look, you vote for me. But trust me, those rebels the other day in the Rwanda bill, it'll be a rise, Sir Lee Anderson, uh, others will get peerages. That's the horse trading that goes on. Sir the part, Kevin. Part, yeah, well, I'm available. Party <laughs> leaders, uh, prime ministers should not be able to appoint anyone. And surely a second chamber, which is a great idea, it's good that we've got... It should be elected. It's an affront to democracy. Yeah, I think it should be elected. I don't think they should be able to be appointed by any prime minister. Absolutely. Uh, but I don't want to abolish it altogether. I just want to reform it because mm -mm. I, I, I'm sure you've been to the House of Lords before and, and you've sat, as I have sat, and watched them scrutinising law line by line. There's some very, very yeah, smart... No, Most right. of them are having a nap and some tea and biscuits no, and no, smell I a bit like be, a saga Lord, Lord, Lord Ian Austin often, take, often allows me to go with him and we sit there and we're we'll there for a couple of hours listening to them scrutinising. Yeah, Lord Ian Austin's a very good, very good Lord. Like we, we, three, need more, three we need more Lords like him yep. because there are some fantastic... I don't mind them being there. Lords. Uh, I don't mind them having a House of Lords, but I don't think they should be involved in making our laws you know, uh, unless they're elected. That's called democracy. No, so, so I, I'm slightly different. On, I don't, Jay, think, they should agree with I don't that. think they should be elected because, in the words of, was it Brenda from Bristol? Not another one. Well, I mean, no, do we have yeah, to elect more and more people? But what I would say I is. I didn't this, say we have an election every if week. We're, if we're, <laughs> well, you know, with the Welsh Assembly, the funny, Scottish, <laughs> this, vote for the Lords every week. This, mayor, mayor, all that. I mean, it's just too much. <laughs> Too much election. But, um, but, but what we do have is a situation where we need to say to the parties, you can't appoint donors, you can't give it to people who've been in your party. Like You've got to have a whole category of these people you can't appoint. Yeah. And it's got to be done on meritocracy. And oh. it can't be party so affiliated. And it can't be, it can't be foreigners. Like, when, when you've got Russian oligarchs being given... Lebedev. Yeah, well, I'm not naming names. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not naming names. Uh, that Evening <laughs> Standard, that's a great paper, isn't it? It's a fantastic... Do you want to write for them one day? we're talking about? Is that what, what I'm after? saying? <laughs> Only George Osborne gets that privilege. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so seriously, I just think uh, Second Chamber, good idea, but, we, you know, like America, you've got to vote for these people. You cannot just have people, you know, aristocrats. There are still quite a few... There's about 16 hereditary... 
hereditary peers yeah. who, who are there purely on the basis of the scrotum sack of their father. I once you dated, know. by the way, something that came out of the scrotum sack of the man who wanted to abolish that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I dated at university. It was the grandson of the guy who tried to abolish uh, the, the lifelong piercing. OK, well, well, I mean, they, they're very reduced, but they can still... What, the take scrotum sacks? No, the scr yeah. <laughs> scrotum, yeah, the scrotum sacks are so... They're, they're reducing. Uh, no, seriously, uh, what about bishops? Why, why are they allowed to vote? As long as we keep on making the king that. head of uh, the church and we keep on saying that this is the church of England and we're a religious country, we're going to have to have the bishops in there. Oh, the, do the you know Lord what? Spiritual. That is a Pandora's yeah. box. If you start opening the fact that, you know, Henry VIII messed all that up when he oh, wanted yeah. to get his end away a thousand times. Alex, I said this no the written, day. I said the day the same constitution. thing. constitution, so if you open that Pandora's box, you don't know what's going to come out <laughs> Absolutely. of the scrotum it's sack of our great, history. It's not a great foundation not, stone for a religion, is it? A, a guy who was it. sick of beheading we've, his own yeah, wives, so he wanted to divorce them. Britain's <laughs> literally invented everything yes. just off the cuff for the past 600 years or something. And if you suddenly make us get rid of all of this stuff, we're going to have to write a constitution, be like America, have race wars, culture wars, you know, mad presidents. I don't know. I think, I'm a bit I think like, already having culture wars and race wars it. in this country. Well, we just well, import them. We don't do it like they do it. We kind of like, you know, we, we do it on a small scale. I like scale. America, but let's be like America. It's like, it's like American portion size. Yeah, more mad. British portion, portion sizes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what, if old, old Starmer's obviously going to win the next election. Um, it's a Lego head. Uh, it's a Lego head. <laughs> you What's your name for Cameron? Lord Spadeface. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name for Rishi Sunak? Lord Spadeface. Space. Says auntie arsehole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just said, uh, and so uh, Trump wins the American election. It'll be fun to see the meetings between Starmer and Trump. They'll yeah. get on like a house on fire. Oh, Lord. my God. <laughs> It's, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we uh, should move on now, I think, to uh, another bad ad. Over 100 years, we've been scrunching and folding toilet paper. Finally, there's a better way. Comfort Wipe, the sanitary paper extension arm and holder. The first improvement to toilet paper as we know it since the 1880s. It extends your reach a full 18 inches while it follows the contours of your body and comfortably cleans. It's as easy to use as a shower brush. Just pop on the toilet tissue and when through, just press the release button and the tissue drops right into the toilet. Think about it, toilet paper is really archaic and disgusting. The Comfort Wipe is a modern solution. I tell, by the way, what just happened? <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, so this is this is uh, the What Just Happened jacket special. Uh, by the way, uh, have you got one of like, those things for wiping your ass? No, I uh, use tissue and the bidet. Yeah, the bidet. <laughs> That's a good bidet. I use the bidet. I wish, yeah. I don't know, we need more of those in the UK. Actually. We do need I really more of them. am a big fan of those. Yeah. yeah. Thank you to JJ and Siobi. Shit jacket, by the way. <laughs> Lovely jacket you're wearing. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> uh, I'll show you Alex show. Phillips. And you can catch me and Alex every day at 9.30 in the morning for half an hour and then for Cross Talk at 1pm every single weekday. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next week. <laughs> what just happened?